the greatest democracy in the history of the world. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump are meeting for their first presidential debate. This might be the biggest showdown that Philadelphia has had since the Rocky movies. But he endorsed Kamala. I have a feeling. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know exactly what to say about that. I don't know if I'm insulted or he did me a favor. By the way, I love Gen Z. I just love Gen Z. <laughs> Right. Manhattan DA witch hunt against uh, me has been postponed because everyone realizes that there was no case because I did nothing wrong. It's a witch hunt. It's a, an attack by my political opponents in Washington, D.C. Harris sees a chance to not only lay out her policies, but a chance to rattle Trump, and in doing so, present herself as being more worthy of the office. Trump wants to portray Harris as too liberal to enjoy a broad coalition. We've seen a willingness by him to attack her frequently. Now, adding additional attention to this moment is that in recent events, Trump has shown a tendency to meander, and one of the open questions is whether he can stay focused on Harris or whether he's going to go into an array of personal and other issues. The flip side of that is whether Harris, a former prosecutor, can bring the kind of tenacities that she's shown in the courtroom onto the debate stage. What matters in this debate isn't only going to be what the candidates say, but how they say it and how they look. Harris wants to bring that sense of joy into her campaign, and how does she stay the happy warrior even as she criticizes Trump? How does she deal with the historic nature of her candidacy in which she could be the first woman to be president? The flip side of that is Trump is very comfortable on television. He's made a career on it with shows like The Apprentice, but he's also now the older candidate. 